The gun that made the 20s roar, the Chicago typewriter, the Tommy gun, they're all names for the most famous submachine gun in American history, and this one pays tribute to it. David, you don't have to know a lot about guns to recognize this one. Yes, there's no mistaking a Thompson. Welcome back to Gallery of Guns. With us today is David Fabian, Managing Editor of Guns and Ammo Special Interest Publications. David, can you give us a little history on the Thompson submachine gun? Trench warfare in World War I made clear the limitations of long, heavy bolt-action rifles. What was needed was something a lot shorter and with a lot more firepower. General John T. Thompson developed a 45 caliber trench broom, but it wasn't finished by Armistice Day. He kept working on it after the war. In 1921, contracted Colt to produce 15,000 of them. Was the Thompson a big hit right away? Initially, it was an utter failure. It took years to sell that first production run. The Navy bought a few, and they were also popular with coal mine owners. But it wasn't until the St. Valentine's Day Massacre in 1929 when the Thompson became really famous. Gangsters like Machine Gun Kelly and John Dillinger used it as well. So what did all that publicity do to the sales? You know, it didn't, it didn't help at all. In fact, it kind of hurt it. The British general staff, for example, wanted no part of what it called gangster guns. Their tune changed, however, when Hitler invaded Poland in 1939. They needed all the guns they could get and took more than a half million Thompsons. The U.S. military bought them too, and they were used in every theater of World War II. In fact, they continued to be used even in the early stages of the Vietnam War. So David, can you tell us about the Thompson today? You know, the Thompson had a complicated career after World War II, with guns being made from various new and surplus parts. Now it's made by the Auto Ordnance Division of Car Arms, best known for their compact pistols. So David, how does this work? You know, the original Thompson had a complicated locking mechanism, but that was deleted in later versions in favor of a straight blowback operation, which is how this one operates. While most original Thompsons were submachine guns, the 1927A1 model was a semi-automatic carbine, as is this one. And the barrel looks a lot longer than I remember. You're right. The original had a 10 and a half inch barrel, and you can still get a Thompson like that where legal as a federally registered short-barreled rifle. This one right here has a 16 and a half inch barrel with a cuts compensator that lengthens it to an overall length of 18 inches. David, I know that different Thompsons also use different magazines. You know, that's right. The one you see in all the gangster movies was the 50 round drum. And this model comes with one, along with a 30 round stick magazine. The drum is a lot of fun, but it takes a long time to load and makes the gun really heavy. There's also a 100 round drum model if you really want to shoot all day long. You know, during World War II, the Thompson was simplified in the M1 and the M1A1 models, and those will only accept stick magazines. And like you said, it is very hefty. Yes, it is. That's something that surprises a lot of people. This one has an all-steel receiver and weighs 13 pounds. You can get one that has an aluminum receiver, and that makes it quite a bit lighter. Put a 100-round drum on it, and you've really got a heavy load. Yeah, with a full 100-round drum, the gun weighs 19 pounds. But you have to remember, when you're firing full auto like the originals were, Weight is your friend, as it helps keep the muzzle down. And David, I see it has the original vertical foregrip as well. The 1921 and 1928 Thompsons had the foregrip. It was deleted in favor of the conventional foreign in the M1 and M1A1 Thompsons. Auto Ordnance did a nice job of getting its shape right. And both buttstock and foregrip are made of walnut. One of the other real neat features, it has a very fancy rear sight. And this model has a protected ladder style rear sight. It's adjustable out to 600 yards, which, let's be honest, is a pretty optimistic number for 45 ACP. But it looks great and it's really fun to use. You aim through the operating knob on top of the receiver. You know, it really is a kick to shoot. It brings back the days of Elliot Ness and Babyface Nelson. It is. There's even a group called the Zoot Shooters, dedicated to competition with classic firearms of the gangster era. With one of these, you're ready to try it. David, thanks so much for coming in today. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. If you've always wanted your own Tommy gun, go to galleryofguns.com and select the Gun Genie. Just enter your zip code and the Gun Genie will display a list of Gallery of Guns affiliated dealers in your area with the prices they'll ask for your new gun. Order with a major credit card and you can be shooting your choice within a few days.